Q&A TV is always pleased to have Jack Butler with us, the Executive Vice President of Hillco Global. Jack, thank you so much for being with us today. Happy to be here. For those who may not know so much about Hillco Global, give us a little bit of background, please. Well, we're a company that has 21 discrete businesses operating around the world. We buy and sell assets. We value assets. We consider ourselves sort of uh, experts on the left-hand side of the balance sheet. So uh, when you're thinking about businesses, both healthy or distressed, um, that have non-core assets, non-core businesses, things that need to move, uh, we're a company that invests in those things. We use our own capital and work with other people and co-invest in situations. You mentioned to me earlier that includes five square miles of Baltimore. Tell us about how that came to be. Well, um, over the last number of years, we've made an investment in something that's now called Trade Point Atlantic, um, which is originally was the Bethlehem Steel for 125 years was the Bethlehem Steel plant. Um, we originally bought uh, the rights above the land, and then we eventually bought the land. We're now redeveloping it uh, into a logistics uh, port. Uh, so by sea, by land, uh, and, and uh, all that goes into logistics. So it's a very exciting opportunity for us. We think it'll bring back uh, 10,000 or more jobs to the Baltimore community, uh, something we're excited to be involved in. That is fascinating. Let's talk about Chapter 11 filings for a while. We know that they've been going down since the recession. The number has gone down. Do you think that'll remain the same, or what are the factors as we go into the rest of 2016, 17? What do you think the forecast will be with defaults? Well, I think you have to look at whether you're talking consumer or small business bankruptcies, or, or large cases, right? I think all of them have different tracks. Um, I'll focus really on, the, on, on business bankruptcies, and I think sort of in the middle market, uh, you're going to see a slight uptick in that, but not, I think, a lot, because uh, there's still a fair amount of liquidity in the middle market. Um, I think by, when you look at the various industries, I think energy, uh, including coal uh, and, and some of the other uh, uh, energy-related businesses are going to probably lead the pack in terms of filings in, 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 in 2016. I think most people expect there to be an uptick. Uh, that doesn't mean that there's going to be a huge expansion in uh, Chapter 11 cases where there are going to be sort of long-term reorganizations. I think people continue to believe that, and investors like we are, are involved in, we believe that you know to try and undo the uncertainty cost and delay, uh, a, a faster conclusion to a Chapter 11 is generally a better one for investors. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think you're going to continue to see the pace maintained in Chapter 11 cases. Well, with the uh, Chapter <clears throat> 11 reform that will be going before Congress you know, more and more, before that becomes adopted, uh, if it is, do, are these modifications and um, modernizations, I guess, that really do need to be incorporated as far as the changing face of bankruptcy, how we're seeing it today? Well, you know, I had an opportunity to sit with the others. I was a member of one of the voting commissioners on that commission. I uh, worked with 17 other voting commissioners and hundreds of people on the subcommittees that spent three years uh, doing that, 17 field hearings, uh, tens of thousands of pages of testimony and, and, and other things that went into it. I, I really do think there is a need for reform. Uh, you know, in this country, if you look back, we, we fix the bankruptcy laws, we reform them about every 40 years, so we're due. The last major reform was in 19. 78, uh, but uh, uh, about every 40 years there's a huge reform uh, initiative here. And I think what we're trying to do here is to try to make sure that the system reflects the realities of the capital markets today. Everyone, of course, is buzzing about uh, energy right now, you know, oil prices. Do you think that the oil prices will begin to come up, level off? Well, look, I'm, I'm not the, the, you know, there's a lot of economists and a lot of people, if everyone knew the exact answer to that question, people would be making a lot of money in the markets, right, yeah. uh, at this point. Um, I think actually uh, what's going on is, is uh, um, there, there are a lot of global factors to why prices are what they are. I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I went and bought gas at, you know, and saw gas advertised at, you know, with a, with a $1 handle on it, a buck 80, a buck 70, a buck 90. Um, it's really unusual, right? And that's mm -hmm. doing a lot of things, right? It's, um, it's, it, there, there are a lot of unintended consequences to this, what's happening in the energy industry. It's not good for the energy industry. Um, and <coughs> a couple things about energy. Um, what's happening is that the, the producers, and the exploration companies that were able to sort of stave off the first phase of this energy restructuring and kind of hang on for the next, for the next opportunity of prices rising are finding that they're running into liquidity constraints. So it's not just the suppliers of the energy industry, which were in sort of the first round of restructuring. Now it's the industry itself. On the other hand, there are industries that are benefiting from this. The automotive industry had its best year in a decade last year. It's interesting to you know you talk to consumers and they have a hard time grasping this because they think okay yeah I go to the gas station now it's a buck eighty buck ninety to fill up and that's really good for you know my bottom line at home but then when you look at the bigger picture with the economy 
and you know how it hurts the economy. Well, that, but that's what I'm saying. There's, there's a yin and a yang, yeah. right? The energy industry is really having difficulties right now. But mm -hmm. for example, the automotive industry so, sold more SUVs and large and trucks last year mm -hmm. than any time in about the last 10 years, and so the automotive industry is doing phenomenally well. Uh, an industry that was on its back just seven or eight years ago. Uh, and <laughs> consumers have more money than they've had, you know, sort of take home pay in the sense that they're, they're spending less on energy. But people who are investors in energy, um, people who've invested in energy uh, opportunities in the last couple of years as well as longer term investors, are having very significant problems and liquidity is being uh, constrained, right? The banks are lending less and we re in the energy industry, without going through it in great detail, the industry sort of gets revalued by the lending world every periodic, every sort of six months or so, uh, and liquidity is tightening up considerably. Well, Jack, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, and thank you for your insight. Take okay. care. Thank you. Bye-bye.